Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Zukradowski of WeAreChange.org. And in this specific video, what I wanted to do is pretty much give you my hypothesis about what is currently happening in our social political state because it's just in utter disarray. Okay, let's be honest here. It is absolutely <coughs> And honestly, it's only going to get more <coughs> from here if we don't acknowledge it, understand it, and stop it. Because I believe what is happening right now is happening on purpose for a bigger cause by a sinister secretive interest who are doing this not for the regard of the people's benefit. In layman's terms, some assholes are just f***ing some shit up and it's time to wake up to it so we stop getting f***ed by these assholes. And this is what I will attempt to do in this video, which by the way, oh yeah, is predominantly sponsored through your support with you purchasing our t-shirts which the link is in the description below and, and you know what to do if you still want to see our videos now moving forward with the main story here i think it's fair to say that the mainstream media has been weaponizing information trying to divide and conquer people because clearly the mainstream media has shown double standards time and time again not regarding principles not regarding doing the right thing but because of special interests big money or of course big corporations We've seen this with human rights violations, selecting which ones they want to propel and push for further war and conflict. We're seeing this right now with what's happening with the Native American in relation to the North Dakota oil pipeline protests. We see this when stories like this fail to garner any attention where a black man has been beaten by four white males and yet the story doesn't garner any attention at all. And some could say this, that this is happening because of gang mentality, because of course, political alignment, and they could be correct, but my hypothesis says that they're most likely doing this for a special interest. And again, I could be absolutely wrong, but hear me out on my hypothesis and why I believe this. Now, the CIA has been working on technological advancements and even algorithms, learning machines, so they could predict social unrest up to five days before it happens. Now, I believe the CIA is doing this because I do personally believe that we are headed for more civil unrest because of social instability. For some time now, mainly especially in recent history, the Western world has been a pretty stable place, a place filled with peace. But historically speaking, if you look at the trends, that is not where humanity usually is. Mankind's history is very turbulent, and it would be foolish to think that this is not a possibility that could be happening here in the Western world very soon especially if you look at the contributing factors like automation and robotics which will severely affect the jobs market there of course being a national resource drain with many people buying up water rights all over the world while of course a major financial crisis looms as pretty much our entire economic system is based on a lie with trillions of dollars of debt that keeps increasing in crazy amounts i mean if you look at the numbers 10 years ago the u.s national debt almost increased three times almost three times as much as it was just 10 years ago this is a system that of course will not sustain itself and with this kind of economic disparity we of course also have inequality as even reported today as we found out from a research group oxfarm from their report that concluded that Billionaire's fortune grew by 12%, about $2.5 billion every single day from a decade ago, where now roughly a millionaire becomes a billionaire about every single day, all the while at the same time, the world's 3.8 billion poorest people have lost about 11% of their wealth. It's pretty clear. The financial markets are manipulated, inflated, and there's highway robbery. There's highway robbery happening on many different levels, including one of the biggest ones being, of course, the alleged defense industry, which is really offense. That takes a huge burden of the national debt, almost $6 trillion since the start of the war on terror. And uh, I would argue that people are becoming hip to this, that they're waking up to the fact that certain people play by different rules in our society and that sometimes things aren't stacked fairly. I think this is why we had the Occupy Wall Street movement chanting that it's the 99% versus the 1%. 
We, of course, have massive growth and even some political success with the Yellow Vest movement in France that has been spreading their ideology all over the world, trying to inspire a new pots and pans revolution like the world has seen in Iceland in 2009, which, by the way, put criminal banksters in jail for the financial crisis of 2008, actually holding them accountable for their illegal activities, which robbed the wealth from their country. And as we have seen, the Yellow Vest movement has been largely either, one, totally mischaracterized by the mainstream media, or largely ignored. And I think the people who are most benefiting from this actual highway robbery, the people who have connections with large industrial complexes, with the mainstream media, with, of course, politics, the special interests that drive the political machine, especially here in the United States, I believe that those people realize that the people are waking up to this fact and they need to change the major aspect of the 99% versus the 1% to men versus women, to black versus white, to straight versus LGBTQ, from atheist versus religious person, from Christian versus Muslim, to any aspect they can to divide people to fight amongst themselves so they don't see the true enemy that is responsible for their problems. They try to make you hate people all across the world like the people of Russia. And if that fails, let's have them fight amongst themselves with, of course, racial polarization, any form of polarization that they could find so they don't realize that they would have power just like the yellow vest movement when they have people from the far left far right and even moderates come together in the streets which is an absolutely terrifying idea to the people who benefit off the current system that we are under and this is why i believe we had the recent two minutes of hate like we have seen with the controversy between the native american and the maga hat teenagers in which absolutely nothing has happened but yet it has divided and polarized a nation more than anything that i have seen in recent times and the stunning power of the media to emotionally manipulate people as they have in this specific case having them even going as far as to threaten harassment abuse and even death for children who are under age shows you the terrifying power that they actually wield a power that can't go unchecked and has to be controlled on some levels and i think that is a fair argument to make here now it's very easy to label the mainstream media as some kind of evil entity here but i believe that they are more of a tool in my own personal opinion that can be wielded and used for of course the benefit of an intelligent special interest who knows how to use them and manipulate them some people have even argued that donald trump is an expert in this but personally i do believe that it goes far more beyond than just him and it's important to understand here that this is not just the media at play here but also social media that clearly has a double standard and is only making the issue worse especially for everyone else with their clear bias while playing in to the bigger game that is happening here. As we saw with the MAGA hat kids controversy where media companies on social media pushed propaganda with celebrities with a total online harassment campaign that literally is causing kids to be threatened and for their lives to be ended all because of absolutely nothing happening. And we have to understand, as even surprisingly the New York Post put it, the media only convinces us that we're all outraged over issues that really no one cares about. Because honestly, talking to a large number of people, they predominantly did not care about the Gillette commercial, about this latest Native American thing, and they only started caring because of pure manipulation by the mainstream media. That honestly has done an outstanding job misreporting, dividing, diverting, marginalizing, and exploiting a situation where absolutely nothing happened to their benefit. And we have to understand here, this is not the first time that this happened. This has been happening for a very long time. It has happened with the shooting of a seven-year-old black girl in Houston that was automatically blamed on a white man and even had a whole bounty hunt for this man that didn't exist. It continued with the Gillette commercial, with their portrayal of men, especially the differences between men and women, and also men of color and white men, 
And I could keep going on and on and on about just the racially polarized issues that are rammed down our throats, trying to make us in one way or another dislike our fellow man. And for me, in my own personal opinion, the amount that this is happening on such level, on such occurrences, can't be accidental since they're all pushing the same kind of agenda. And that's why I believe there's a bigger kind of authority here pushing this. Now, who is that authority? I would guess that this would be institutions that do have control and power and wield it over the mainstream media like we see in secretive U.S. government agencies, agencies like the CIA, that even in 1975, during a congressional hearing, admitted that they used the mainstream media to distribute disinformation, had CIA agents within the mainstream media, as well as the ability to publish and delete work that they wanted the public to see or not to see. Now, this happened in 1975, and it would be foolish to think that this program is not continuing, even though there is no evidential basis yet proving this. But we do know from many declassified documents that it has come out that thousands of movies and even shows have either received backing, support, or even direct script writing and editing from U.S. government agencies. The FBI, even previously before, planted a fake news story in order to plant surveillance software on a suspect's computer. And there was even a very highly recognized famous journalist in Europe who came out about this fact, who also died of a heart attack, Udo Ufketi, that whistleblowed on secretive government agencies having direct control of what is published. And there's time and time again that this is proven. And with information playing such a key role with power, it would be foolish. It would be idiotic to think that there wasn't some kind of relationship between the two. And this is why what I believe is happening now is a sort of COINTELPRO 2.0. And for a reference, COINTELPRO was an FBI operation from 1956 to 1976 that worked with local law enforcement and even media to track, harass, discredit, infiltrate, destroy, and destabilize dissent groups in the United States. Predominantly, they did go after the Black Panther Party, which, by the way, did dissent to a mainly political left-wing association, but also stood for the Second Amendment, was anti-war, anti-establishment, anti-authority, and pro-self-determination. They had a school breakfast program where they fed their local kids in their community and made a very big impact now of course there's also very negative aspects of the group as well but those negative aspects were only heightened because of direct infiltration from the u.s government that a part of this program actually authored racist fake letters from different organizations to each other to spur racial hatred amongst dissenting groups of the u.s government policy in one instance the fbi agents decided to revise a children's coloring book which even the black panther party rejected as being too anti-white and too violent but fbi agents distributed even a cruder version of it even during the free breakfasts for children program that they were running the FBI also, most importantly here, this is the most important aspect here, colluded with reporters and news media planting false stories like the one that Jean Suberg, who was a pregnant white film star and a very prominent activist in anti-racist causes, they planted the story that she was carrying a child of a prominent black leader. This led to a lot of stress, and Suberg's white husband even sued the FBI for this because he claimed that this was why she resulted in a stillbirth, a total breakdown, and later a suicide because of this fake news attack on her by, of course, the FBI. And because of this and many other instances that are too many to even document in this video, which I could keep going on 
for a while. This is why I believe there's a bigger agenda at hand here. Now, my hypothesis could be absolutely incorrect, but from the evidence that I showed you, this is why I personally believe in it, even though I don't have any actual evidence providing this hypothesis to be true now. And I need to make that clarification to be as honest with you as I can, because there also is a possibility that a lot of this is happening because of incompetence, because of laziness because of reporters being overworked because of course of less accountability in the journalism room because of greed because of clickbait because of people incentivizing of course this larger polar polarization that is happening now those are all possible scenarios that could be unfolding here and a reason to why the media is as horrible as they are but for me I definitely do believe that there is more at hand than just laziness and incompetence with the effectiveness and benefit that this is providing and just how convenient it is for the people who are actually screwing us over. But regardless, if you think I'm wrong or if you think I'm right, one thing that is very clear here is that this latest thing with the Native American and the MAGA hat kids is absolutely stupid and a huge waste of our time. And no matter what your personal belief is, please control your emotions, look at both sides of the story, make up your own mind only after doing that, and most importantly, do not become a part of the media's tool to make you hate someone else. It's a very important lesson, and if you found it important, share it with your friends and family members. The YouTube algorithm most likely won't because they haven't been doing it for a lot of our videos. But if you agreed with this video, your ability to share it with your friends and family members is more important to us than ever. It's critically important for the survival of even this news organization. So once again, understanding that, I'm ending this broadcast by saying, Love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for a lot more here on youtube.com forward slash we are change.